You're about to embark on a journey through the written word of God on subjects that deal with the day. This is Brothers Just Searching. How you doing, everybody? And welcome to another podcast of Brothers Just Searching. I'm Isaac, along with Brother Anthony. And back from a, a little getaway is Brother Daniel Pena. Brother Daniel, we're glad to have you back, my brother. Amen. Praise God. Be glad to be back. Praise God. Uh, how's your? How's the nice sunny California? <laughs> I know you went on on some tragic news, but it was a lot better than Louisiana. <laughs> oh, it was good. It was good. A lot of a lot of ministry. No matter what, no matter no matter where we go, you know, we always have a heart uh, just to reach out to people, you know, loved ones. My mother-in-law passed away. Bless her heart, but you know she's no longer suffering, and she's in heaven. So, mm. you know, praise God for that. But for my wife and the fan and all that, you know, we all know how it is to yes. lose somebody. You know, we just the grieving part. But you mm. know, thank the Lord for His grace that He gives Amen. us strength. You know, to get through that. So, thank you, thank yeah. you. For asking. And, and we bought we bought that up on the podcast when we said you was out. Um, you know, it's a lot easier going to a funeral when you know they where they're at. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's That's not right. you know you're not blind. To where where they're at, you know, you you know where you're gonna see him again one day. So that's a that's a blessing right there. So, but uh, well, as we before we start off, I like to say, um, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you have listened already, we thank you for your continued support. You know, um, wherever you're listening at, though, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and that subscribe button or that like button and write us a review on uh, the platform that you have us on. We're on Apple. We're on Google. We're on Spotify. We're on Radio Public. We're on a few other podcast providers. Um, just go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, that reaches out to other people, people that might be interested in the same subjects that we are in. So it helps us out. You know, it, it gets the word out for the podcast. And unfortunately, our society is all based on likes and subscriptions mm -hmm. and all that. Um, same topic. Um, Brothers Just Searching podcast um, has a Facebook page. We go ahead and share things that are going on with us. We also share a few things going on with our church. Uh, like this week, is, uh, this month is March Fire. We had a great March Fire last week uh, on Wednesday night with Brother Russ uh, Cripido. He came and ministered for us, and uh, tomorrow night is going to be Brother Bill Bailey. Mm -hmm. um, he's gonna, he's from Florida. He's coming and minister for us tomorrow night, and we're just excited to see what God's going to do. Um, if you're in Bro Bridge, um, come come pass by our church, um, New Beginning Fellowship Church. Uh, we're on Facebook. Um, we usually share our live feeds, and Brother Daniel ministers every so often there. He's the assistant pastor out there. So, you know, come tell us, hey, you know, we, we love having new visitors. We had some people from Europe um, last Sunday. That was pretty neat. Yeah. That was pretty neat. Uh, I don't know if they listen. You know, we had doing some research. They had some people from France that listened to us, so we don't know. <laughs> 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 I didn't go talk to them see where they were from. But, but uh, anyway, go like us, our church. Uh, also, coming up in... Um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, March 21st, we'll be in Abbeville, Louisiana at Cross Point Church. Uh, we're going to be doing a youth rally out there with uh, Brother Stephen Terrio. Brother Stephen's going to be ministering in music and uh, preaching the word. We're going out there and we're going to lead worship and we're just expecting God to have a great time. And um, It's a youth rally, everybody, but if you're around Abbeville, please come. They said, look, we're labeling a youth rally, but anyone is welcome. So uh, our main goal is to win souls. So that's right. that's how, that's the same thing with this podcast. You know, we decided to do this not to get gain, not to gain riches or be popular because what we're talking about we're we're not going to be popular. <laughs> but uh, thank God that uh, there's is some people out there that love the Lord and they want to do what's right. So, all right, guys. So last week. We had Brother Ellis Birch on, and we went ahead and dove into the spirit of Baal. We went ahead and pulled from Genesis chapter 11, and Boogie gave us a history lesson on the sun worship and Baal, how it came about, and it started from Nimrod through Baal after the confusion of tongues went into um, 
Babylon. So what we were thinking of is that there's a lot of these things that are happening today. We got into the spirit. What is the spirit of Baal? But we want to see the out, what, what was going on after the impact was in this world. Because you might look into, there's a, um, a documentary, Riddles and Stones, mm-hmm. that show a lot of things that is going on in our country that portray, pertains to bell worship and sun worship. So I'm going to go ahead and let Brother Daniel and Anthony kick us off. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start the podcast tonight. So Brother Daniel... You're elected to start us off. Well, praise God. Amen. I know that I missed out on the last time. I just felt like we could just do a, a quick review on the Tower of Babel. I know a lot was said the last time, but I just believe that um, there's still a lot of insight in it. We know that Nimrod, uh, <laughs> his name in the in the Hebrew really means rebellion or valiant. So we know the type of spirit that he was and what he, what he wanted to do at that time. We know that he was a type of the Antichrist, even at that time, trying to... Um, trying to bring together, you know, a people under, you know, one name and one language and to defy God, what God commanded them to do was to spread out and be fruitful and just spread out throughout the earth while they were trying to do the opposite. So more than likely, we know that he was really um, just influenced by the enemy Mm -hmm. and Satan. So uh, the Bible says that he was a mighty hunter and some people tend to believe that that not only meant him hunting animals and all that, but even for the souls of men. Mm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so mm-hmm. there's a lot to be said. I know that uh, that Brother Anthony gave a history with uh, Nimrod and his mom and mm-hmm. all that was involved yes. in that. But really, if we just look at this tower and ha- as they built it, it was just really a precursor to what what's go- what is going to be happening in these last days, as far as in the book of Revelation, the 17th and 18th chapter, and uh, even the 13th chapter that was dealing with the mark of the beast, we know that this is going to come again once again. And this time, the Lord is going to permit mm-hmm. the enemy to go ahead and do it because the Bible sets on because he's still on the throne and he's still under control. Praise God. Amen. Well, the thing about Babylon, you got to realize, is still effective today in the political realm and the, even the, uh, the, uh, the Christian realms. You know, I was watching a video. Uh, they were talking about how they have some churches who actually, if you read the Bible, they're connected to bell worship. You know, like the the Opelis, we talked about it last week. I mean, one of the biggest Opelises in the world is in the Vatican, uh, St. Peter's Physicator uh, in the Vatican City. And if y'all go look it up, go look at Google, it's there. And the union of his, uh, of Nimrod and his wife, E star, S star, E star, and is a is a marriage is a conversation between their marriage and the sexual fertility. So it's in the very Vatican is, or Roman Catholicism is supposed to represent Christianity. So what is this Abelis is doing, you know, in a supposed to be quote Christian place? So we have a lot of churches that adopted Babylonian symbolism and culture mixed with Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's what we mainly we, we're focusing on as for. But we, we want to go more and dig into the roots because we will get to that, mm-hmm. more of the symbolisms in the Catholic Church and even, unfortunately, in the Protestant mm. churches because, you know, we were talking about that on the way over here, mm-hmm. Luther's 95 Thesis. Mm-hmm. That, a lot of those things that he brought up through the Reformation was pertaining to a lot of things that weren't on Scripture, which mm-hmm. we we realize now is a lot of bell worship. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. Praise God. I was just doing just a little bit of research on the on the term uh, Babel itself. Right. And most have learned that it means confusion, but it also means gate of the gods. Amen. Oh wow! So it's mm-hmm. an opening. It's a portal. And if you ever look at even at the Aztecs and the Egyptian pyramids. And that's what they would do. They would do their sacrifice on top of there on the pyramids, human sacrifices to appease mm-hmm. the gods. So it's just like, it's just a portal into the spiritual realm for them to be able to get their, um, let's say, their spiritual blessing from the dark side by doing these human sacrifices. Another word that they said that the Tower of Babel would be was more like a, a ziggurat, which is uh, it's square on the bottom of the base of, of the Babylonian 
temples and then they would keep building tier after tier till finally they have a temple right on top so mm. you know here we go with this religious thing that they were building so it's it was just not just a tower right no you know right. just to build and say we're defying you god we're going against your commandments and your order right but it was right. ultimately defying him in every way possible against god's government wow. and aligning themselves up you know to the dark side which is satan himself wow. so praise god now do, do you think because we were talking about that you know, with the flood, because what happened with the flood, mm-hmm. they, they was trying to say, well, look, you will never be flooded again. Mm-hmm. But do you think Nimrod, and look, he wasn't, according to the Bible, he wasn't a he wasn't a believer of the one true God. Right. Do you honestly think that he built the tower because demonic forces showed him, hey, you have to worship the sun? Because that's what Baal really means. And we studied that last week with the signs of the spirit of Baal. Do you think they were trying to reach the sun to touch the sun to say, look, we're closer to our God, the sun God? Well, definitely. Yeah, that, that's why they were building this tower and all these other pyramids that have been built throughout the ages. It was always man trying to reach up to God mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. only to reach up to God, but to become God that's right. themselves. You know, mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, basically, and I'm sure you touched on um, mm-hmm. On uh, on the history with the uh, with uh, Nimrod's mom. Yes, sir. You know, after he was murdered or he died or whatever. And she said supposedly that she was impregnated by the sun the rays sun. Mm-hmm. and then had a son named uh, Timons, which was yeah, the Timons. reincarnation mm-hmm. of Nimrod. So, yeah, so here mm-hmm. we go with the sun yeah. worship, you know. So you're, you're, you're always going to have, yeah. the enemy's always going to be trying to, per, to pervert every way he can, especially the things that God has created in the universe. That's right. You know, he, he came and, and, and came against his best creation, which was Adam and Eve in the garden, and was able to get them to sin against the Lord God. And then he's been doing that ever since then till now. He's always trying to pervert whatever God has made good and pleasurable in his own sight. And that includes the stars and the suns and the moons, you know. That's right. And so that tower was not only just for them building to defy God, but it was also being used for stargazing and all mm-hmm. your horoscopes and all the reading of the stars. So there was so much involved with this tower where the Lord had to just finally come down and put a halt to it because it wasn't time yet right. for man to unify themselves. And we know that that will be happening in these end times. And it could happen at any time now, the way we're going right now. And it's just amazing how Satan takes men away, their attention from God. Instead of like saying, like, for example, Mother Earth worship, they're like, oh, Mother Earth Gaia, Mother Earth, we worship you. We want to take care of you. Instead of worshiping the God that created it, they're worshiping it. So I think that's what happened to Tower of Babel. That's what it sounds like to me. Instead of them saying, look, there's a great God of heaven who made the sun, who made the stars, who made the moon. They're worshiping it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of giving God the glory. Instead of, you know, focus was off for him. Well, oh, yeah. and, you, and you can yeah. go to a New Testament principle. Mm-hmm. I believe it's in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, where Paul says uh, they're going to worship the creation more mm-hmm. than the creator. Mm-hmm. And that, that's that been the point, you know, of people we want to get close with nature and we want to be as gods. And that's, that was Satan. The, we went, we go back to original sin of when Satan fell. That's mm-hmm. what Satan wanted. He said, I will be like the most high. Come on. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you got to, re- so first off it was pride, but secondly, he wanted to be like the most high. And look, mm-hmm. Believers, we want to be the same way. We want to be more like God and more like Jesus, but we do it through the through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We don't do it through, oh, well, we're going to be powerful. Right. You know, we want to be holy like the Lord. We don't want to be powerful as the Lord. You get what I'm saying? We get that through what Jesus did at the cross, and that all goes back to, remember when Satan told Eve yeah. in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse 4, but the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Die, he lied. <laughs> For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm-hmm. And it's always that human nature to, well, I can be like God. Mm-hmm. People do it as for a powerful sense, but Christians should do it as saying, look, we follow Jesus and want to be more holy like him. We want to be, we want to serve him mm-hmm. and be in his likeness because we love him and we accept his son in our hearts. Exactly. And really, technically, I mean, really, if we think about it, the Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, so God is dwelling within us. You know what right. I mean? That's so right. if little of these people that are deceived, that are involved in the occult and all this mess that they're in, 
Little did they know if they would just give their lives to Christ, they can have God living within them. And, at one, yeah. and one day, they're going to be able to live with him throughout eternity, you know, mm-hmm. with him. So, you know, we will have, you know, we will have that in the end. We will be like Christ throughout eternity. And me and Pastor Brandon was talking about that last Sunday. We was talking of, you know, the human element to say we need a savior or we need to be with God because... Look Look at all your superhero movies, and look, mm-hmm. I'm going to make a statement. I've watched every superhero, well, an exception of a few of them, but um, majority of the, I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> Brother Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, nah, that's that cool. Funny. <laughs> okay. but, uh, but when, you know, I watch these shows, but it show and it started subtle. All they were in gods, they, they were not regular people that live in the universe. Slowly and slowly, as it came down, 30-some movies all together, I believe, Mm -hmm. now they're putting as Thor's a god, Odin was a god, and they they slowly trap people into thinking, and Dr. Strange is, he's not a god, but he has the power of the gods, you have, so you, you know, that's always a human, I think people are more attracted to them them shows. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're saying, "Well, look, we want to we we want to be like that because they have that they have that void inside. We want to be like God." Well, what it does is, it, it makes like like you said, these movies, like even Star Trek, and a lot of them. If you watch them, they they pretty much is like telling you there is no God. You just we're going out there in space, and you know, and we're we build we're pretty much we're building our own godhood. If you think about it, like in, in Star the the Star uh, Star Star Wars. And all, it's all about the force within you and all that stuff. It's like it says, men being like Satan desiring to be God and, and have the power of God. And, you know, and, and, and just to show you how, like you said, men want to be God. They want to be it, you know. Yeah, definitely. And we know that even with the Tower of Babel, supposedly with all the Bible scholars, that it was somewhere near and in, in, within the perimeter of of the nation, modern day Iraq now. Mm-hmm. Where it's been. Mm-hmm. Now some are trying to say that it was a little bit further up north towards Syria. I kind of disagree with that. Right. I believe it's Iraq, like the majority of those that have studied on it, and we even know that Father Abraham came from that area too. That's you true. think about that. So Mesopotamia. even the Lord pulled him out of the that Babylonian mm-hmm. worship and brought him into you know to start yeah. a nation. Right. So, so praise God on that. And also, if you, we're probably going to get more into that later on, but. The Tower of Babel, and I said that last week, sounds like that was where the the origins of religion started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Because, you know, you have a relationship with the Lord, but if you have a religion, it had to start from somewhere. Everybody, where all, where all these religions started from, it started from Nimrod and his family because they were really the first religion to say, hey, look, don't go to the, don't go to the one true God. Mm-hmm. You know, he's trying to deceive you. Come to us. We'll go to the sun God, which the Lord created. It was... It's funny how human nature is. They take something that God created and say, well, he ain't the truth. We got to worship this. Right. And you're right. Just like he sold them the lie you said earlier about the garden. You will be like God. And that's, mm-hmm. what, he's, what, that's what the enemy has been selling to humankind since the beginning of the dawn of eight. You know? Right. That's a lie that you, know, that you can't become like God. Right. And the thing was at the time, they, Nimrod, he lied to the people saying, hey, you know, I'm not saying this is in the Bible, but it kind of makes you wonder because the way society is going today. I'm pretty sure Nimrod told his people, hey, don't follow the old ways that Noah, our great grandfather, did. That's old fashioned. That's, you know, that, that him burning incense to God and making a sacrifice to God. That's the old way. We need to find a new way. And that's what's dangerous about a lot of your churches and even a nation. For example, we have the founding fathers that believe in the word of God. They believe in the Ten Commandments. Look, our nation's going today. Oh, that Bible, that's outdated. You know, we need to find there's newer ways. There's better ways. And I felt in my spirit, I felt like that's what Nimrod did to the people of the day. Forget about God. You know, let's we have a better path. Yeah. You know? I mean, after the flood, I mean, after all that they've seen and mm-hmm. they experienced, and still the hardness of the heart because mm-hmm. of sin mm-hmm. has pushed even Nimrod to do what he was doing against you know, the Lord God. And so it, it shows, I, we marvel what sin can do in, in a person, no matter how bad mm-hmm. the circumstances are. Mm-hmm. They still just see the, the depth of sin 
and the seriousness where Christ ultimately had to come to Calvary and die for and to save us even from right. ourselves. Right. And he was feeding the flesh of the people. Think about it. Like these Amen. movie entertainers and people, the reason why they're so popular because they feed on the flesh of the mm. people. Right. They give the people what they want. And I think that's what Nimrod did. Mm. You know, he fed the people's flesh. You know, you could be God, and not just me. You know, because think about it. I don't think Nimrod just stood up there and said, I'm this God, and y'all just follow and obey me. He said, you all follow God. Yeah. You all could be God. So, you know, I'm the chief one, but we all deity. Nimrod know? was very charismatic. You know, right. And, mm-hmm. and that he just had that gift that, that uh, people are attracted to them. And most, let's, let's, let's just be honest, most people are just followers. Oh, yes. And yes, yes. God's got leaders. Mm-hmm. But most people just want to follow someone. And when they get someone like this person that's... Uh, you know, charismatic and probably obviously dabbled in magic and all that. So that really, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. ooh, he's, you know, he's the power of God. Let's follow mm-hmm. him. And, you know, that's deception Wow. in one wow. of its purest forms. So someone that's very charismatic and has power. Yeah. You know. It's just that demon, the, like demonic forces. I've been studying it this weekend, how demonic forces control images. They control people. And you see, most people, they focus on the person but not realizing the spirit behind Mm -hmm. that person. Like in Revelation, the idol, the Bible said the idol speak. I believe a demonic spirit will go through that statue and make it speak or whatever. So that's the thing people got to realize, you know? Yeah, the book of Corinthians talks about that. Mm -hmm. There's a demon behind, you know, the idols, and, and that's very correct. That's why you look at some of the statues of the Virgin Mary where it's bleeding. How did yes. that happen? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, some have proven that they were, they were, they somehow doctored that up to make it look like a false miracle. Right. But then there are right. genuine miracles right. that are demonic that are behind them idols. And we know that she is mm-hmm. what? One of her titles. And that's, we know that's not the Mary, the Bible. No, no. She's no. actually, you know, the queen of heaven that they mm-hmm. talk about so much in the Old Testament with Baal worship. And here we yeah. go. So they bake cakes to her and everything in Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. All right. That's right. And so we what? So at the beginning of Tower of Babel, we're really dealing with sun worship, which started all the major secret society and religions of the world. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at it, and then they even perverted, you know, the mother goddess, you know, little baby, you know, child god. So mm-hmm. you have all those in throughout the majority of the world. They have their own, you know, woman, uh, mother, child god. They would call it, you know, idols and all that. Already again, the enemy's working overtime to pervert. That one day what would happen, that the Lord would come in the flesh and be born to come into this world. You know, I, well, that's back in the day when my dad used to go to, in Baton Rouge, when he used to go to a Bible college. And I was only seven years old at the time. I would go once in a while to hear this professor talk. And he was saying, he was talking about the Tower of Babel. He was saying how the Bible is so true. He says, go look at all the way in Mexico. Well, I know we talked about it in the last broadcast a little bit, but think about it. The, the tower, uh, all the Tower of Babel goes all the way there. Look how they're building their temples. It looks just almost the Tower of Babel. It's very similar. There's sun worship, everything, way, way in the New World. It came all the way from Babylon to there. Egypt, the pyramids. I believe that was a, t- a symbol to me of the Tower of Babel. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You got the sun god Ra in mm-hmm. Egypt, you know, so they were the sun disks. I mean, they were worshiping sun like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Even the Aztecs, when you look at some of their artwork, and I've looked at it, a lot of sun worship, just a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of emblems of the sun, a lot of it in, in, in Aztecs. So, man, you see all the different connections of different parts of the world in different time, right. but yet they're all connected, you know, to the sun. Right. It was just different names. That's right. all they were, pretty much. The same compass, but there's different names. That's all it was. I mean, it yeah, goes your mind. Go, go to modern day. Mm-hmm. That, that's You brought it up earlier. That's the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go to what... These gods always didn't evolve, but they always were passed down to different cultures. And if you go to the time of Rome, mm-hmm. which I was shocked to find out a couple of weeks ago, that the... That when uh, Constantine mm-hmm. went ahead and got the church leaders said, look, we got to do this. All right. Who, who's the main God? Mm-hmm. Well, it's the sun God. Well, let's name him Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's why he has the uh, the shield behind his mm-hmm. head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're going to do with Mary, as you said, they, they, they took Mary and they put Mary as a different form. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, that that goes to more of a modern day a lot of catholics aren't worshiping jesus per se they're worshiping the sun god because the sun god is like the main god 
and his own little gods in the back, which looking back at it now, let's go look at a lot of mainstream ministers. Kenneth Copeland says, oh, you know, there's one big God, but we're all little gods. I wonder if that came from that concept as well. Mm. Amen. Well, I mean, to really look at Rome, we have to go back to the beginning, especially the sun worship and how it was embedded into mm -hmm. the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And so we know that at one time the Roman Empire was uh, ruled by the by the sword yes, at one time. But then mm -hmm. later on we found out that the Caesars changed their costumes to the popes. Mm -hmm. And so you said earlier about Constantine being the one. Now, I believe that Constantine was used mightily by the enemy. Yes, to I compromise because so. we know that the first three hundred years after the church was birthed, and until that point with Constantine, that the enemy was heavily persecuting the church. I mean, mm -hmm. persecuting her severely. I believe there was like over ten different uh, known persecutions throughout that time period when they were coming against the church. Well, well what does the enemy do? If you can't beat them, yeah, let's join them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he comes mm -hmm. up and he brings up his man, Constantine. Yeah. You know, wow. to do this and to bring in, you know, not only. Um, uh, to compromise the Christian faith, but also to bring all the paganistic stuff that came out of the Roman Empire. And then voila, we have the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church with, with sun worship. You know, I was reading an article because we, we were doing this study about it. I was reading an article how they actually admitted in there that they said that all Constantine did when he took power, he told the Christian bishops, he said, well, to bring the pagans in, well, all we do is we keep, we renamed everything. Like Peter you know, Peter's really Jupiter. And they said, we're just going to recall him Peter. And mm -hmm. like you said, uh, the queen of heaven, we're going to uh, we'll call her Mary instead of Venus. You know, they changed the names. They changed the styles. It's kind of like the modern uh, purpose-driven movements and your modern, a lot of your modern churches today. To bring the people in, we have to, you know, to bring the crowds and the worldly people, we have to bring the worldly things in. Mm -hmm. So I think Constantine is amazing. He, I believe he was the first one to say, let's bring the world into the church. Right. You know? And, yeah, and that's the what edict, he did. The Edict of Milan in, in 313, that's when he did that. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. stopped the persecution, and they made a deal with the Christians. If you come out of hiding, we'll embrace you, but you also mm -hmm. have to embrace what we're doing in our that's new right. found state church. church. You know, mm -hmm. This is a state church now. Yeah. It's run by the government. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. voila, you know, it, it's amazing how the, how the enemy just comes up with stuff as far as compromising the faith and getting people to be deceived and to have a form of, uh, you know, what's, what's the saying in the word? To have a form of what? Godliness. But what? Denying it. The power thereof. Of sex turn away. So mm -hmm. praise God. Yeah. And so when you really look, I mean, even when you look at the Vatican, you look at a, uh, the Basilica with St. Peter and all that, and then you got the obelisk. If you ever mm -hmm. look at it, look at the, you got the will, the yes. will of life mm -hmm. around it, which mm -hmm. is eight phases of witchcraft. Yes. Witchcraft, eight phases. Mm -hmm. I forgot what they were. There's eight major holidays of witchcraft, too. We all know that. But if you look at that, I'm going to be a little bit graphic. I don't know how, what our age we have as far as yeah. the audience, but basically you're having a sexual intercourse, spiritually speaking, right there. Yes. With the yes. circle and then plus the obelisk in the middle. Yes, sir. And so here we go again. You know, it's always the enemy perverting these religions and using sex as an object, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to deceive the people, too. And so actually, like even Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. It's the same kind of pattern as in Rome. So there's the connection between the United States and Rome. And there is a heavy connection. When you start looking at the street layouts mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., you find a lot of stuff that's, that's like, wow. There, that, this is not just a coincidence. These were, 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 were built into it in these roads. But you also have the same thing, the Washington Monument, which is the obelisk. We know that at one time George Washington, one of our, our first founding uh, president, founding fathers, was involved in Freemasonry at one mm -hmm. time. Now, some say that he came out of it at the end. Praise God, I hope he did. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Only the so. good Lord knows. But but when you look at that obelisk and then you look at the state capitol, what I was taught, what I've learned, is that between that obelisk and the state capitol, the state capitol symbolizes the, the, the womb of a woman. So they're saying that there's a there's spiritual wow. energy mm. going from the obelisk to the womb. Mm. And what they're trying to do is usher in the spirit of the Antichrist for these last days. Well, that would make sense because in Egypt, they believe that the sun god Ra lived, his spirit lived in it. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense. Well, yeah. That's where the obelisk came from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Egypt. And so yeah. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> when you start doing all the tie-ins of, how much sun worship there really is. Even the Jesuits, when you look at their emblem, I think mm -hmm. it's 36, or forgive me, or 39 little 
all the way around their black sun. It's a black mm-hmm. sun. It says the mm-hmm. IHS. And they're basically worshiping the sun too. Now, I'm going to throw this out to you right now because most Christians will disagree. And I'm pretty much, you know, I'm pretty settled in my faith about this. But a lot of times, and mostly, you get your, like, the Seventh-day Adventist brethren that say that um, that Rome is the one that changed the times and laws and changed the regular service from mm-hmm. Sabbath to Sunday. They have that mm-hmm. much power. Now, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying I believe right, that. Right, right. But that's what they are accrediting Rome, had that much power that they changed the day of worship of Jehovah God from the Sabbath to Sunday. And I'm just quoting what they're saying. I'm not saying I agree yeah. with that. <laughs> well, it's just like even some of your holidays, We will, future we can get into it. Now, we're not against the birth of Christ, right. but the truth is December 25th was was a pagan holiday. It was a, the uh, the winter uh, festus. Right. It was the winter solstice, and they believe that tied into bell worship. So some people think Constantine to keep, because people, that was a big holiday, back in those days in Europe and all that, to keep the people into the church. And so all we're going to do is just change the name from Jesus to Bell, you know, Jesus to Bell. Right. And, in, in, you know, we're just going to keep the same old customs. And so, like we said, when I get the birth of the Christ, God forbid, yeah. but like Satan, he imitates what God does. And Constantine was just doing it not to honor Christ, per se. He was just like a lot of modern-day churches. He was trying to keep the, the population in. He was trying to control people. Under his control. Definitely. Yeah. You, look at, you look at some of the Catholic portraits and paintings. They have the sun rays over the head. Yeah. Or supposedly mm-hmm. the baby Jesus and Joseph mm-hmm. and Mary and all that. Right, right. And that's all sun worship, all of it. And it, it even mm-hmm. ties into uh, Rome even uh, uh, used to celebrate Saturnalia, which is Saturn, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is another paganistic uh, temple that they had in Rome. So yeah. even that within itself, the ring that goes around symbolizes... Yes. The sun worship. When you when you look at Saturn from a distance, I'm serious mm-hmm. with a telescope. When you look at it with, with the ring around, it looks like an all seeing eye. You have to look at it. Yeah, it's pretty wow. unique. Wow. And so I don't know if you've ever looked at Saturn, but supposedly they have a polygon on the top of the north pole of it. Wow. A six sided thing. And on the south, I've seen these pictures and I can't really <laughs> confirm on right, this right. yeah. But it looks like an all seeing one eye on the bottom of the south pole. Of right. Wow. Sorry. It's crazy, huh? It blows your mind away. Oh yeah. Oh man, oh, yeah. but uh, but the thing is though, like Constantine, for example, like I'm not saying I'm not saying Constantine had some, like he did li- limit the persecution a little bit, but some people believe he had another edict, and some people think he that's when he really started persecuting the believers, and that's where some people believe the Dark Ages came in really with Constantine when he started persecuting the true believers, because not all Christians bought this. There were some believers. They're like, man, this he's the Antichrist. He's mixing Christian and Baal worship together, and he's mixing Judaism with it. I mean, he was mixing like all kind of stuff together. And some Christians like he was still worshiping the sun god, Zodos. Oh, yeah. He was still worshiping the sun god. He was still uh, he was still he was still the priesthood of pagan temples. Matter of fact, they actually turned some Christian some pagan temples into churches. Yeah. Because you know. Definitely. Yeah. Because even before he took the throne of Rome. The Bible says that he had a dream, and supposedly it showed up a certain kind of a cross. Now, there's many different versions of you it. Know, versions on it, so we'll yeah. leave it at that. Some kind of a form of a cross, mm-hmm. and then it said, in this sign, conquer. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's what he did. Supposedly, he put that same emblem on all his soldiers' uh, shields for warfare, and he ended up winning that, that, battle. that battle and by took over all forces. Of it. Yeah, you know? so he was helped. Yeah, he was helped by the right. the spiritual dark side uh, to, to take over, and... and uh, Obviously, the Lord permitted it to happen. Right, I mean, right. everything happens for a reason. God is still in control. Right. But the thing is, even his his mama, her, her name was Helena, and she was exiled in Jerusalem. And she even said that, hey, my son is not fully converted. There's records of it. And yet we have people today say, Constantine's a Christian. He converted. But, you know, even she denied it. Well, as Constantine did, you know, as, as any good good politician, he lied most of the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, because, you know, and look, it made a good point. Like you said, it, it would have brought in the dark ages because, okay, here in Christians, they've persecuted for so many years. Mm. And he come out and he said, hey, look, I'm ending persecution. Y'all mm. come and come out the woodworks. Mm-hmm. It's easy to find out who's a believer and who's not. And look, it, like today, there's a lot of Christians that have itchy ears. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. they want they, they wanted to hear that. You mean we can still serve Jesus? Mm-hmm. And go ahead and serve the sun god, the moon god, and also we could do it. A lot of a lot of churches do that today. They 
Yeah. Excuse me. They'll go ahead and say we want to serve Jesus, mm-hmm. but at the same time we want to we want to keep our pornography, we want to keep mm-hmm. our lust, we want to keep our disobedience, mm-hmm. we want to keep our they want to keep the things of the world. That's right. And unfortunately, a lot of the modern churches that they are giving that because mm-hmm. from from personal experience, I have a lot of friends that go to a lot of local big churches here that are economical and prosperity ministers. Mm-hmm. And they, they'll go ahead and say it's wrong to do that, but they won't tell them you got to quit doing it. Right, right, right. It's up to your own conviction. And look, some things is to that. It's up to you, the, the, the believer's conviction. But at the same time, there's some things in the Word of God that says don't do it. Mm-hmm. And the modern church, a lot of economical churches are just saying, no, nah, don't worry about it. Well, the thing is, remember Jesus said, carry your cross if you want to follow me. You got to carry your cross daily. And I never understood that until when I started studying things similar. What you're talking about, just what Jesus meant. Some people say, like in Roman Catholicism, it meant salvation. No, what he was saying was, you're going to have to give up some things for the kingdom. Yeah. And and you're right. And a lot, they don't, it, that goes all the way back to Constantine. You know, we want to keep the people. We want to keep, you know, keep the crowd. Mm-hmm. We want to make our church bigger, bigger, and bigger. And we ain't gonna tell them about sin. We're not gonna tell them about hell. I mean, it's really strange if you if you hear a young preacher today talk about hell. Maybe the older ones, right. some of them. But if you hear a young preacher today talk about it, you're kind of shocked because it's like that's almost like an old thing, you know. And, and thank God for ministries like yeah, like Jimmy Swire Ministries yeah. and Jimmy Swire's Bible College that are teaching young right, men right. to preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. We have ministers from here that came from. That's right. Or at Thank that God. time, world evangelism. But, you know, a lot of modern day Baba College are just showing them how to preach Greek or teach Greek and stuff. We're not against all that, but it, it's coming to the point of teaching people what is hell and what what is sound doctrine. And a lot of people don't well, know A lot that. of these colleges, they're run by Jesuits. They, uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon said that. He said a lot of these colleges... They run by for Jesuits and they're coming against corrupt the word of God. So that's another subject. But <laughs> yeah, you were, you were yeah. dealing with the with the term ecumenical. So I just want to just go yeah. back a little bit back more back in time mm-hmm. and just give uh, an example of the Roman Empire before it became mm-hmm. the Roman Catholic Church. But uh, what Rome would do when they would conquer a land, they would go into that land's temple mm-hmm. and find the people's most popular god. Yes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then they would institute it into their pantheon back mm-hmm. in Rome. They would bring mm-hmm. that God into their religious sect. So that would be, right. it would much be easier for the people to submit to them. That's right. Because, you know, it was ecumenical. And it's no different than it is today. Right. They we adopted see, it. We see Rome mm-hmm. doing that a lot. We see yeah. a lot of evangelical and Pentecostal uh, big name preachers that are, are having private audience with the Pope, which, you know, we know that they're being used for the New World Order, mm-hmm. and they are a part of, you know, what's coming in the near future. So, you know, history is just repeating itself, and the enemy has sold this lie to all these different religions. Hey, we can all just get along. Right. You believe in your God. I believe in my God. There's many ways, you know, to God you right, know, right. to get there, and we know what the Word says about that. Broad is the way is to destruction, but narrow is the gateway into life, which is found through Jesus Christ That's from right. Calvary. And the thing is, like, we're not against, like, churches working together. The thing is, is what, what does that church or their denomination believe? Do they believe in works for salvation? Do we got to have our own merit? Do we got to make a ladder to reach up to God like the Tower of Babel did? We got to build up a tower to reach the heavens? Or are we trusted in Christ alone? Like, for example, we have some churches we yep. associate with. They believe in justification by faith. And, of course, there's a few little areas where we don't agree on certain little things here and there. But other than that, we believe in justification by faith. We're like, okay, this is we can we can agree on this for sure. But when you come to Roman Catholicism, Seventh Day Adventist, Mormonism, they all believe in good works. And they say, yeah. well, we believe in a Jesus. But remember what Jesus said: there'll be many Jesuses, there'll be many Christs or false prophets in the last days, saying, "I am the Christ, and shall deceive many." Right. So, like in Masonry, they say we believe in the Trinity, and some people who don't understand Masonry. They think, oh, they believe like the Trinity like we do, and it's not the same Trinity. It's Nimrod's Trinity. It's not the biblical Trinity. So you got to be cautious of what, 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 what people say. It's not what you think sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. It just, um, 
you look at climate change now. What's mm-hmm. one yep. of the main things they want to start shutting that down on Sundays? You know that in the in in the, in the country of Poland, mm-hmm. they don't shop no more on Sundays. Everything's mm-hmm. shut down. Yeah. Oh, good. So mm-hmm. now you're gonna start seeing a mandatory Sunday law come into effect, and mm. and Rome is behind that. And the Pope wrote a book. I forgot the name of the book. I wish. I would remember back in 2015, it was dealing with climate change. So that's what's really going on right now. Mm. They're pushing this climate change that we need to change stuff and you know, change our way of lifestyle. But really, all this is about control. Right. It's about mm. the precursor of, of, of the mark of the beast and the new world order coming into effect. So, And if you go back to the Tower of Babel, that's well, probably maybe why Nimrod was so powerful. As you said, he, you know, as you said, so most people are followers and have to be a leader. He showed his power and everything. He said, look, I'm the high priest. I'm the only one that can go to these gods and mm-hmm. talk to them. Like I said, it's not scripture. The scripture don't mm-hmm. give that much mm-hmm. detail onto that. But if he ha- if he said that, look, hey, you know, we're, we're the source of getting all this energy from the sun. And, everything. Mm-hmm. and look, if you look at climate change, mm-hmm. oh, in 12 years, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to burn up. Mm-hmm. Puts fear in people. Nimrod probably did the same thing. But if you don't do what I say, mm-hmm. the yeah. sun's going to come down and he's going to... Yeah, yeah. That's speculation. But yeah. they do that with the the climate change issue, global warming. Oh, and we're going to freeze up a few mm-hmm. years or then we're going to burn up. Mm-hmm. And it's not constant. It's more to... I look at climate change as them worshiping the creation more than the creator. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I just want to just emphasize, I, I, because I want to say what I was saying earlier about the climate change in Pope Francis. But he wrote a book, and I hope I could say it right, it's La, La Dat Don't Si. And that's <laughs> the name of the book that he was dealing with the climate change, and that was back in the May 24, 2015. So I just want to put that in there, because I hate leaving, you know, mm-hmm. have people hang, and you say something, and you're like, oh, man, I forgot the name of the book. But yeah. that's the name of the book if you want to check it out for yourself, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about from that point on. And, you know, you were talking about how I was watching a video, and it makes sense. In paganism, that's where it came from, like the, the uh, with many gods, and like in India with all these major gods or whatever. That's where all that came from. And paganism, they teach, like in Druidism, and matter of fact, that's where our ancestors came from with Hazes. So that, that we came from Ireland or England, Scotland. Stop at the morning to you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but in that area of the world, in paganism, where it branched from Babylon— they had special people. They were uh, doctors, or they were they were special uh, worship men, and they were like people. They people were scared of them because like we're the gateway to the gods. Like we the only ones that can talk to the gods, and and y'all these peasant people, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all can hear from, but we're special. We can hear them. It's kind of like in the the Catholic Church, like you know we can go through Mary instead of God, and we the priests can go through, you know, through God for y'all and. It's, that, that spirit's always been there. I say modern day, but yeah. it, it is modern day. But when Joseph Smith came on to the mm-hmm. to the uh, mm-hmm. to the scene, mm-hmm. he he said the same thing. Listen, uh, I got these books, and God only speaks to me. I'm mm-hmm. the prophet of God, mm-hmm. and y'all gotta follow me because I'm the only one God talks to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with Muhammad and the uh, the religion of Islam. Yeah. He was the one that saw Islam, and he's he's his, he was uh, Allah's prophet, mm-hmm. and he was the only one that can hear from. A lot and people feared him, and that's more. Uh, instead, it wasn't a reverence fear; it was more of a fear of control. He knew mm-hmm. he had fear, and unfortunately, a lot of modern day uh, leaders of nations do that. They they put fear in the heart of me. Mm-hmm. Like, I got the power. You don't, 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 right. don't hurt me. And I think that's where that spirit all came back from Babylon, uh, from oh, Babel, yes. like like we talked about last week in the spirit of Baal. Yeah, and you know we're in the last days, and, and tying it in with the Tower of Babel, remember they only had one language at the one time. We know that the Lord scattered them mm-hmm. because of disobedience towards what He said, wanted, what He wanted done on the earth. And now we're in the last days where we have the technology, yeah. where it's becoming one language again. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know, Christians need to wake up and understand the sign of the times that we're living in and how, you know, how we're in the very last days, and we just want to make sure that we're right with the Lord and we're living right. You know. And not to be playing around because things are getting serious mm-hmm. now. And we're starting to see this new world order. We're starting to see technology making our world even smaller day by day, second by second, really. Our world is so small now. We're just so globally connected with technology that it's not even funny. Da- um, it was told to Daniel in the book of Daniel, in the last chapter, that knowledge would increase to and fro. Mm-hmm. That's what the angel told Daniel. 
And so, you know, it's amazing how it's coming back to just one language. Well, this is the thing, too. I was hearing there was a program. I forgot what it was for, but I don't know if it was for English or whatever. But the thing was, it was called Babel. I heard about that, and I was amazed. I was like, what? And they called it Babel. It was like a language thing. It was like an English thing, or it was something to do with computers. I'm not quite sure, but it was Babel or Babel. I was like, wow, I wonder if they done that by accident. <laughs> well, a, <laughs> lot of, a lot of things aren't done by accident. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and I'm... It's a conspiracy theory, but we all have we all have Apple products in here. Mm-hmm. Well, if you notice, the Apple is bidding off. Why is the Apple bidding yeah. off? It's pulling uh-huh. back. You get what I'm saying? That's just a small. A lot of things ain't done done. Yeah. All. It's not. You you don't think Steve Jobs looking and said, "Let me do an Apple and I'm gonna do like a bite of it." He had right. to have some. Supposedly, the first Apple computer that was sold was for sold for six hundred sixty six dollars. <laughs> Just saying, really? Wow. Just yeah. Saying. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Huh? Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, we could. Oh my lord, we can go on. Yeah, we, that's, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We can start talking about yeah. IBM, but we'll leave it alone. <laughs> but uh, the point I'm trying to make is that you can tell they're they're like you said the languages they're trying their best to just get everybody back as one. Yeah. And, you know, in the future we're gonna study about the one world order, and that's what the one world order is about. To get every nation, everybody into one mm. chunk, a one piece of real estate, like they did in Tower of Babel, one man ruling, and it is common. Trust well, me. And, and you, you know it's common because you know, as a conservative, I listen to Rush Limbaugh. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't have to be conservative to listen to Rush Limbaugh, but right, I, you know, right. what I'm it's saying, just the, I, idea. It's yeah. just the idea. Uh, I listen to Rush Limbaugh, and Rush said the other day that he said that's why one world order won't work. Mm-hmm. If that man's quoting it, he has to know something's going on. Yeah, it's a common st- word now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and he, he was fighting against it, but you get what I'm saying? It just, it's starting to come and people might, oh, that's a brand new thing. No, it's been, it was prophesied yeah, in the book of Daniel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I started in this 20 years ago, it wasn't hardly, nobody didn't know too much about it. But now, I mean, everyone's talking about the new world order. Mm-hmm. Musicians, politicians, mm-hmm. actors, you name it. Mm-hmm. People are starting to understand uh, the direction that this world is going. So at one time, it was really kind of just condensed. It was just real shallow. Not many people had the knowledge of the New World Order, but now just like open season. With the technology we have, anyone can just get uh, educated if they really just start pressing through and searching and for the truth. I mean, I'm going to use for example. Phil Robinson said that the other day. He was talking. They were, asking, they were studying some, and... uh. Jay said, well, I just looked it up on my phone. <clears throat> Phil said, you what? He said, I looked it up on my phone. He goes, I went to the encyclopedia. They said, you did it the hard way. <laughs> it's just information is so easily defined yeah. on an iPad or a Google a, a Chrome. or some, It's so easy to find information now. Yeah. And like you said, it's bringing everybody. Because I ad ran for, I think, the new Google Chrome computer and it came to the point where he's the man looked at the woman the little girl and said you see mom who she's talking to mm-hmm. that man speaks another language but it translates it to english it was it was oh. coming in at english you, oh. and wow. it just technology like you said technology has got so far to right real quick uh, in the old testament we've seen some of the examples how the lord dealt with sun worship we look in the book of Ezekiel, the 8th chapter. Remember, the Lord took Ezekiel to show him what was going on mm-hmm. within the, the temple itself and how mm-hmm. they had their backs you know, turned away from the temple and, and they right. were worshiping the sun. So yes, sir. this is how, you know, how serious this is of sun worship that the Lord dealt with it in the Old Testament. And it's still vibrant and alive even in these last days. And we even have a picture, uh, I believe it's in the, in the book of Kings, with Elijah against the 450 prophets of Baal, what mm-hmm. was done there too. They were yes, wiped sir. out by the power of God. So, you know, even Israel was struggling with sun worship yes, sir. throughout its history in the Old Testament. And you even look now, I mean, with the Roman Catholic Church, they have what you're called the monstrance. In other words, that's, that's just a mm-hmm. piece of it. It's like just a, a gadget that they would use to put the host in and to walk with it wherever and then to use it for the, their, you know, their holy mass. And did you know, if people look at it very carefully, because that's one of the things I was watching this weekend, and the guy showed it, did you know there's a crescent moon 
that holds that wafer. And most people believe Just, it ties yeah. back to sun worship with oh. Nimrod, Baal worship, and his, his yeah. wife and the, and, and the sun, Temu. So Catholic Church adopted a lot of that with Constantine, and they brought it in the church. Well, remember, I mean, they also said that yeah. uh, Nimrod was the sun god, and yes. his wife was what? The moon goddess. Yeah, the moon goddess. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it all connects. It I all- find it's pretty weird that she's the moon goddess. I wonder if Islam, because you know it's Islam, has the crescent moon. So it kind of makes you wonder if that even goes back to well, the Tower of Babel. Yeah, but if you go look at it, I think it was Muhammad. Yeah. He went into a temple. Yeah. He destroyed all the temples except one. Yeah. It was uh, uh, Allah, which Allah is the moon god. god. Right. So now you, uh, I haven't done my research to connect mm-hmm. all the dots. Yeah. But... Also, you got to realize Muhammad had a lot of ties to the Catholic Church. Yes. According to... Um, Alberto. Alberto. Mm-hmm. Uh, because his one of his wives was a Roman Catholic. And, and he had a cousin that was a Catholic also that trained him. Right. So... Yeah. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, yeah, people don't me. realize that Constantine had a lot of Augustinian teaching. Most people don't know that about Islam. It has a lot of Catholic doctrine in it. And people don't know that. Well, yeah. I mean, they got a common denominator, which is the praying beads. Mm-hmm. You know, Islam has it, Roman Catholicism has it, and supposedly that came back from in the day Bill. with uh, Nimrod, they had the mm-hmm. praying beads too. So this is this all you know, tied to uh, you know to the Babylonian uh, system. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, it just it just got renamed and repackaged. That's all. Yeah. History proves that from other nations it went to it was just renamed, different name from different gods. You know, and, and today is this repackage. It's nothing new under the sun, like the Bible says. And, and, and look, I'm going to point back to what we said last week. And we, we mentioned a lot. Of, we, re, we, we said some things we said last week, and that's fine. We can be repetitious like that. What, what gets me is the modern church, the true modern church. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about Mormonism. I'm talking about the Catholic church. I'm not talking about mm-hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. I'm talking about the Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled mm-hmm. Blood bought church. Mm-hmm. A lot of people go to church today and hear what the pastor says and trust what the pastor says and don't do their own research. Right, right. And that's, you know, but then the, the Bible says that there should be a great falling away. I wonder if that's also mean a great falling away of knowledge. There's a lot of things. You know, you hear a lot of people say, well, this and um, all means of the falling away of the church and everything. But there's not a lot of knowledgeable people in the church. They're not doing their research. They're not reading their Bible to the only time they possibly open up their Bibles on Sunday mornings. Right. And even that, you know, they bring an iPad or whatever. They <laughs> well, you're right. And, you know, we were saying earlier about technology really just exploding. But on the other side, it is a curse to us because it, uh, it hinders our memory. Right. Mm. Like when mm. I was in school, it was all about books. Computers were really coming in. <laughs> When I think I was in going to high school, if I'm if I'm correct, that's all right. my age is showing. But um, you know, <laughs> now with technology the way it is, most people don't even want to get into the word, and and to me that 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 just really hurts a believer, you know, to get into the word for themselves. You know, it's it's up to each believer to have the responsibility because they're going to be accountable, mm. uh, you know, of getting into the word for themselves and finding right. out what their pastor is preaching or who they're feeding off is, is biblically correct or not. And that's going to be on them. Right. They're not going to be able to just be able to blame a, you know, a pastor above them, but they are responsible right. for looking into the truth for right. themselves and examining the scripture. Right. What does the scripture say about them? Timothy, you know, study to show thyself a proof, you know, approved, right. a work, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He keeps going on. So, yeah. you know, everyone has to do their homework on that. Yeah. Well, since you mentioned that about technology, I was listening to a lady. She was talking about Bible translations. And this is an old video. It was about the 80s or 90s. And she said something about happened in the Dark Ages. She said, because the people couldn't read the Bible. They were forbidden. You know, they couldn't read in their language. The Catholic Church hid the Bible from them. But the, what the Catholic Church did, they said, we're going to explain it to you. And we're going to have pictures. Mm-hmm. And you're going to learn the, with the pictures we have. You're going to learn Bible stories from that. Right. So I find it's amazing how we're going back to that. This is repackaged. It's more instead of a picture, it's computers now. But I feel like Protestant and Catholic and other denominations, they're not reading the Bible no more. Yeah. 
that is trusting in more deeper technology. One of these days when I'm preaching, I'm just going to go way off the left field and, and keep going with it until finally people start figuring out what I'm doing. Exactly. Because I want to see if they're awake or not. You watch. Yeah. Well, it's oh, the same yeah. look. Back to pictures, movies. Yeah. Right. Look, they made they made a, a new Moses movie. Mm-hmm. They made a Noah movie. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They made the whole series the Bible. That's not Bible. <laughs> it's not Bible. The 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 they made the Son of God. You know what I'm saying? There's all these movies, all done by the History Channel or by people mm-hmm. that don't know the word, and people watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's scripture. Mm-hmm. And w- when you open your Bible, no, it's not. And I remember I had a, a lady tell me one time when she was actually said, "Isaac, did you see it?" And I told her, I said. I said, it's not biblical. Right, right. And she looked at me and she said, yeah, but that's a gateway for them to start coming to church. <laughs> so, yeah. in a sense, yeah, you could be right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I did this, oh, that's gospel. No. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about going to church. And that's, or reading my Bible. Right. And that's what's scary. And look, hey, we can go to Nimrod. I was going to bring that up earlier. Nimrod was just the grandson of Noah. That's right. Mm-hmm. And... That 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 whole generation was falling away again. Why? Wow. You yeah. think about it, okay? And that's that's how much. If we, why didn't they keep telling the story about Noah? How Noah was saved, and how Noah. You get what I'm saying? Nimrod using hey, that was a god of judgment. The sun god's a god of love, or you know he could have used terms like that. But it goes to the point. Why wasn't it passed down? Unfortunately, a lot of Christians. And thank God I got my son in a. In a Good Christian school, we go ahead and we, you know, we, we teach them the word of God. But at the same time, a lot of families mm-hmm. are sending their kids to public schools and not even telling them about Jesus Mm-mm. and the knowledge is getting swept away. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. the Tower of Babel, I believe, was so powerful. Yeah. And the Tower of Babel, you think about it, it represents humanism. Man becomes mm-hmm. God. And what evolution is about men yeah. becoming God, evolving into Godhood. And all, I mean, you trace it all back down. It's all a worship of men. Like the Greeks, they were they were worship of men. They you know, mm-hmm. that's why they had these sports. And we're not against sports per se, but they use these Roman, sports. The Romans. the Romans, the Greeks, you know, they believe that you you could become God or you you had a you know, you had to eat. they when they worship their gods, they didn't do like the Persians and all them. They didn't worship cows and bulls, they worship the form of men. So humanism goes way back. The Tower of Babel and way back in history. Uh, let's, let's look. Mm. Let's look at a lot of modern sports, and this is all tying back to it is with sun worship and things of men. Uh, and look, like you said, I, look, I'm a big football fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and two of the biggest names in the NFL right now is Tom Brady and Drew Brees. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't do it no more. I drew a lot away from it, but. You know, I used to have pictures of yeah. Saints players, right, right. Um, you know, T-shirts made and stuff of that nature. And that's really, I didn't put him as a God, but at the same time, that's promoting a man mm-hmm. to a so high of a level. Mm-hmm. And what's sad is even the church does that today mm-hmm. with a lot of modern preachers. That's right. And they, they put him so high on a pedestal mm-hmm. that when they fall, they're shot because they fall. They thought they were in... They were invincible. In, invincible. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, that's why you should always put Jesus first. When I heard it, when an old pastor and even Brother Brandon and good pastors, they tell us, don't look to us. No. You know, I mean, we're preaching. The, look what we're saying. If we're quoting from the word of God, that's what you should focus on. Not completely on me, per se, but with the scriptures and the truth that I'm that I'm bringing out. So that's what that's what most people should understand, you know, when they look at that, you know. Yep. All right, guys, we're getting close to the end of our time. Any closing statements, thoughts, or concerns? Yeah, if anybody got any questions out there in in um, audio land, they can go ahead and just text us or whatever. However, they can uh, connect to us, and we'll do the best to answer them, you know, as soon as possible. I'm sure there's plenty of questions they got out there listening to everything we hit we hit real broad well, if, if you and if you do have questions on to that point at that point to the facebook page mm-hmm. um i know i got people that listen on anchor uh you can send us a direct message a message through anchor there you go um you can do that or you can go to facebook mm-hmm. and just send us a message through there type in brothers just searching should pop up right away 
and go ahead and send us a message. And like I said, I, I look at it every so often. So if I get a message, it's going to notify me. Well, we talked about bail tonight, and it's very real in our society. The more I study this stuff and the more I realize it's coming out through technology. Me and Brother Daniel, we were talking about that not too long ago, how in the football, like the half times, how we're seeing more witchcraft, more black and white witchcraft, and that all came from Babylon. That's all. That's all. And then, and this things blood out this Babylonian worship. It blow your mind. And so, think about it. It's a number one, one of the number one enemies we got out there. And make sure it don't affect your house because you can come through the TV as much as anything else. So, you got to make sure that you guard your heart and trust in God. That's one of the reasons why I wrote my book like it did. Cause I saw how Babylon, the entertainment industry, using stories to destroy and lie to people and get people to the satanic side. So I wrote my book, The New Kingdom. You can find it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. That's why I wrote it. I want to give a good parable of leading people to God and not to Satan or Baal. Amen. All right, guys, I want to thank you again for coming. Uh, Brother Daniel, Brother Anthony, um, it's a blessing doing this podcast with y'all guys, and um, y'all have a lot of knowledge. I learned a lot <laughs> in these last couple of episodes. But um, y'all keep us in your prayers. We um, we're trying to move forward with this podcast. We, um, you know, a lot of people look at these things and say, "Oh wow, you know, they're doing a podcast." There's a lot of work that goes involved with research getting the right equipment, getting the right mics, and we're praying that God supplies all our needs so we can glorify him and his work on the cross and uh, get some good information out to y'all guys. Um, we, If y'all can go ahead on our Facebook page and just tell us how much is encouraging y'all and uh, tell friends about it. That's the best way to get something out is by word of mouth. And uh, just keep us in prayer that the Lord keeps showing us what to bring forth on these podcasts. Um, this wasn't by accident. The Lord allowed this to happen for a reason. And uh, we all feel 2020 is a big year. And God's about to do great and mighty things in our local assembly and throughout the world. So tonight, just y'all keep your, keep us in prayer and let the Lord lead and guide y'all in the way that he wants y'all to go. Thank y'all and God bless. Mm-hmm.